Now the veteran truckie who's calling for a complete overhaul of the industry. Stephen Corcoran says he's lost too many mates in what's become Australia's most dangerous profession. Brady Hall's travelled interstate with Steve to file this exclusive report. You're hearing the panic of a distraught witness. Truck driver Stephen Corcoran is filming and searching for his mate somewhere in that mangle. It's just happened in front of him and it's too late. To have a truck fly past you in reverse, window height, and a trailer rolling at you, it's an unbelievable scene. And you just, you accept that you're going to die there and then. It's just another day and another accident in what is now officially the most dangerous profession in Australia. You're putting your life on the line every night of the week. Around 330 pedestrians, car drivers and truckies are killed each year as a result of truck crashes. We lost Dave, not only we lost a husband, we lost a best mate, we lost a father, we lost a companion. The food we eat, the clothes we wear, we'd have none of it if it wasn't for truckies. Truckies are the lifeblood of this country. They put food in the shops, they put petrol in the pumps, they keep our economy moving. Oh, I'd have to be 80 or 90 hours a week, at least. Stephen is a long-haul driver who traverses all over our nation's black bitumen and dirt roads. It's a very lonely job. You can, you can go days without talking to someone face to face. I've joined him on his 55-ton rig out of Sydney with a load of cane mulch destined for Bunnings. When we're doing the overnight haul to Melbourne, what sort of money will some drivers earn for this? $150 to drive from Sydney to Melbourne and then $150 to drive back. It's another 14-hour day, and then some. So you might drive for 14 hours a day, but there might be six hours on top of that where you're loading up the truck. That's all unpaid working time. You see, so truckies well, only get paid when they're driving, so logbooks are rigged, corners are cut to earn a decent wage, and we on the roads are paying the price. A lot of companies literally getting away with murder um, because the drivers are, are pushed to earn. Um, it's an unregulated industry and with that comes operators that are happy to flout the law. I've known of drivers um, not fill in log books or fill them in incorrectly so that the, they can gain more hours, more driving time. Neil Parker can't take it anymore. I've been in yards where I've been asked to take out trucks that had bull tyres on it. Um, I've driven trucks down the road that had ineffective brakes. His union points out the obvious. And it leads, frankly, to deaths and injuries on our roads. So after 45 years of long-haul driving, he's given it away. Instead of uh, working nights, which I was mostly done um, on working days, I slept in my own bed at the night, eat home-cooked food and work less hours, and it's all good. Stephen dreams of that, but he needs the job and is fortunate to work for a good, honest company. It's a big sacrifice for you, isn't it, mate? You've got a wife and five kids back at home in Queensland. They pay a heavy price for me to uh, be out here. I quite often miss birthdays and anniversaries and special things at school and stuff like that because uh, the job just takes you so far away, the, the tyranny of distance that we have here in Australia. Halfway, he changes truck with another company driver and minutes later, on his way again. The hours roll on, the cars disappear, leaving just an early morning procession of heavy vehicles lit up by white, orange and red lights. Finally, a break. Oh, mate, it's good to stretch our legs, eh? Yep. <laughs> Get out and... I think it's quarter to three in the morning. Is this breakfast or dinner? Uh, <laughs> this is around lunchtime. <laughs> oh, gee. Well, the, the food night. on the road, from what I've seen, is absolutely... Appalling. It is. It's, yeah. it's very poor quality. You've had about 47 litres of coffee milk on the way too, by the way. Yep. I've been keeping tabs on you. You've got, got to keep that caffeine level right up. <laughs> what about, you know, when you have a shower and things like that? What's it, what, you know, well, when do we have a shower? Uh, at the end of the journey. 
however long that is. Can you, uh, yeah. you can go a few days without a shower? Oh yeah, sometimes you have to, there's no facilities. We've pulled up at a truckie's most sacred site, a memorial with the names of truck drivers killed in road accidents while doing their work. This is the wall of remembrance for those killed just in New South Wales. How many names are on there? Uh, there's over a thousand. These numbers are reflective of war. It represents a lot of yeah. widows and orphaned children. Yeah. And there's at least one of these memorials in every state of Australia. It's a war on the road and, and these are the heroes that have given their lives all in the name of productivity and cheaper prices at the checkout. Think about that for a moment. Absolutely everything gets carried by a truck at some stage. And we want what they're carrying as cheap as possible. But at what price when a trucker is earning $150 for driving in the middle of the night from Sydney to Melbourne? You've seen how many accidents over the years? Too many to count. Hundreds. Hundreds. You've seen hundreds of accidents. Yeah. How many of your mates have you seen go? Uh, I've had 13 of my mates killed. Um, I've witnessed three guys pass away. Um, In front of your eyes? Yeah. The most recent was his mate Dave. They were in convoy. That day, the only reason it, it was him and not me is that I said, you go first. He has struggled to cope since his death. It's just devastating and it, it just makes me feel sick. That's what's left of his truck. There's my truck. We just had breakfast together. Mm. And it's just terrible that... And you, you filmed it. Why did you do that? Um, because of the fuel on the road, um, with the tankers, um, I did expect that it was going to explode. And I figured that they would at least find my phone because... Um, that would explain what happened. In Stevens had three accidents himself. Remember, this is the most dangerous job in the nation. Not soldier, policeman, fireman, nor miner comes anywhere close to the number of truckies who die on the job each year. It's become so embedded into um, the psyche of everyone. They're so used to hearing it on the news, it doesn't register, it's not a shock value anymore. I mean, we've lost uh, 65 truck drivers over the last year. Over the last decade, there has been on average over 300 deaths a year involving a heavy vehicle, over 5,000 injuries. That is year on year. And Michael Aird from the Transport Workers Union says this can't go on. If there was any other industry where this was occurring, there'd be a Royal Commission. Welcome back. When a truck driver is killed on the highway, families at home are left grief-stricken and shattered. Here's part two of Brady Hall's special report. Though Stephen's taken it upon himself to be an advocate for his fellow truckies, fighting for, among other things, danger money to help boost their meagre wages and cut out the risks. It will give drivers the ability to say no to unsafe work practices without taking a financial penalty, which they do now. If you don't work, you don't get paid. If you say, no, I'm not going to do that, it's unsafe or I'm fatigued, you just, you don't get a trip so you don't get paid. And so giving them the ability to take a night off during the week to recover from fatigue is, is one way. He says a few more cents per kilometre may just stop some drivers from pushing the boundaries. It gives an image correction to drivers who are stereotyped as taking drugs and speeding and breaking the law because it only takes one bad apple to spoil the bunch for, for everyone. I recall it like it was yesterday. So many truck drivers dying on the job and so many wives and children battle on without them. I got a phone call from his best mate that had just driven past um, the accident scene. Really, I don't think Al, I don't think he had to say anything. I heard him crying. He just kept crying and I just knew. Mari Benson's husband David died after his truck burst into flames in Melbourne three years ago. With the cabin alight, he bravely took it 
away from traffic. The police gave him raps um, for the evasive actions that he took. We lost our two little ones in the accident. On a rare chance home, Darren Bourne took his wife and kids Kayla and Tamika for a ride in the truck. But an impatient motorist overtook Darren's rig, forcing it to roll over. The witnesses said they jumped back in their car and drove. And another trucking statistic is notched up. We're still on the road at daybreak, on the last hundred or so k's. And soon, we roll into Melbourne as the city awaits. And truckies arrive with the goods we all need. He drops off his load at the depot. It's an average night for the Australian truck driver. In ten minutes, he picks up another load. And heads straight out from Melbourne, headed for Brisbane. It's a story we all need to hear, isn't it? Figures show truck drivers are 16 times more likely to be killed on the job than workers in other occupations, with fatigue the number one cause. And according to one union report, nearly half the drivers surveyed said they are pressured by employers to skip rest breaks.